This is sort of an impromptu video that I decided to record as I was looking at where modding has sort of developed into 1.10. I personally have not been involved with much in the modding scene for about two months, and now that I'm getting back into it a little bit, uh, I'm starting to see some interesting trends, one of which being the Tesla API. Um, I wanted to give you my thoughts on this from a developer's standpoint and what I think about it. Now, the Tesla API is an interesting one. Back when the capability system of Forge came out, it was teased that a power API could be done and RF could easily fit that mold. Now, between the whole COFH deciding not to work as much in the new versions and all that drama, Nothing really came out of it, but the post that I had read on Reddit had a simple implementation of a new power system. I don't even know if it was called Tesla at that point, but all I know was that at one point I had read up on this way back in the day, and I supported it from that point. I said, hey, go for it. I think that's great. The sooner all of us modders move to this new capability system, the better. Now... Two months later, all of a sudden, I noticed that that was actually done. It was never intended to be its own API. And in fact, if you come and you look in their GitHub page, if I can find it, they actually mention how they just did it as a proof of concept. Where was this? Yeah, it was made for the fun of it. But now look at where we are now. And apparently it received a lot of attention. So interestingly enough, here it is, and there's some interesting caveats about it. First of all, the RF API has been officially updated and has been maintained, which creates a problem. First of all, most people will be using RF as the default. Now, Tesla is somewhat compatible. I wouldn't say it is compatible, but it it's going to cause confusion, essentially, having two power APIs while doable isn't necessarily best on the developer and it's not necessarily best on runtime because now we're doing extra checks. So ideally, Tesla would win in this battle and it would become the new power system. I would be totally okay with that as a developer. I think that's a great way to do it and this implementation is very good. It is not pulling another thing through the dirt up to the new versions but starting fresh and using the new capability system to everything it can be. Now, the capability system has already been implemented for items, so moving items back and forth, that's something that the pipes that I developed in Neotech were one of the first of and why it broke a lot of compatibility with older mods. I love the capability system and I think it is something that is going to change the way mods work and make it a little more sane, essentially. There was a pull request put in to have the liquid system overhauled to a capability system, and I do believe that has been merged to the main branch now. So it allows modders to not have hard dependencies on these interfaces. They can find these other things without having to know if it's in the environment or not. Now with it being in Forge anyway, that's just going to happen, but it allows for two specific things, one of which being if I am from one mod and I want to ask if another mod uses this API, it's very simple to check. I don't have to have that API installed to see if they have it, and that's where the benefit of this comes in. It makes it so that in order to do cross-compatibility, we don't have to do that. It also allows for something even more special, which is attaching those capabilities to existing blocks such as vanilla blocks that don't normally have it. So if I were, let's say I wanted to have a furnace output power based on how much fuel it's burning, that's something that's totally doable. Or say I implemented a redstone API that reads how much progress it has from 1 to 16. You can attach those capabilities to things that don't have it, and that's what's very interesting. Um, so say you had a chest and you wanted to implement something based off of that, you can read the amount using the forge given ones and attach your own to it. But all that aside, Tesla would make 
the Energy API system much simpler. And as an example, I have the code pulled up for a default implementation. He has already implemented a bunch of the basics of a Tesla container, which is great. The implementations they had before were a little bit uh, difficult to manage. And because you can use certain annotations to make this optional as a soft dependency, it makes it so that it's easier to communicate with other mods that have this capability as well. So essentially, in order to get something up and running that can store power, all you have to do is initiate the container. That's fairly simple. It's straightforward. It even says right here, very straightforward. And then, of course, you have to save and write the data. Now, this code looks very long because you can see he's very well documenting the code. The important part is just this simple line. He has a serialization built into the default implementation. And while other mods, uh, or specifically while RF has done that in the past, this, in my opinion, is ever so slightly more robust and simpler because it allows you to break out the points that you need and write it to your own tag. If I had multiple containers, this would allow me to have separate containers. When you're implementing an interface, you can only do one unless you do some fancy magic, which I've had to do in the past. Having this system allows it so that I can have multiple energy uh, systems in the same block. And now the easy part of interfacing with other mods is, again, a lot of documentation where they point out a lot of the things I'm talking about and one line. The way capabilities work is they're essentially static values that you test for. So first of all, if I want to see if something has a capability, I'm just going to call the forge given, does it have a capability? And that will enable me to pass in something that extends a capability. So it doesn't even have to be in the other mod. It will then test that object against static objects that have been instantiated by that uh, mod. They don't exist in other things, so that's not a problem. They don't equal the same thing. And that way, here you can see if it's a consumer, producer, or holder, I'm returning true because I am all of those. Otherwise, we're returning the super, which is going to be false anyway. And then in order to return that, it's simple because it's using generics here, which are some of the more robust features of Java. All you're doing is you're testing again for those specific capabilities, and if so, you're casting your capability down to the generic that was passed in. It's that simple. Now you have interface with other mods. This thing can be charged by other things. It can discharge to other objects, all with this simple interface. If you wanted it to do other things, you could, but essentially what you have here is a battery, and then you can change the capacity, of course, by going in in your constructor and changing that. And that's definitely something you can do. And I would imagine his read and write from MBT take into account changes in the maximum store and so forth. One of the other probably more important things, but also something I really don't like, is that there is no limit now essentially to power as you can see here before we were limited to the integer which is 2.1 billion it's a signed integer so there was limit there but at the same time you didn't have some mods way overpowered compared to others it sort of limited us a bit so that we would try to work better there are certain mods and i won't name names that created way too much power for anything to use and even then they were pushing that the fact that they had to push 2.1 billion rf means you're using too much those are not numbers humans normally think in it's not something tangible i would rather have something on a scale from 1 to 100 than 1 to 2.1 billion however i can already predict that with the new quantity of 9.2 quintillion being a number i can't even tangibly think of in my head right now that there will be issues continuing on with these way overpowered mods that just want to be overpowered for the sake of being overpowered and as the past has demonstrated overpowered mods tend to get a lot of attention and i'm not going to name names there either this is probably my one worry about the tesla api there is no standard 
and that's a problem. There has to be some sort of standard. The RF standard has already been a hot topic of debate. Like I said, there are mods that come in that all of a sudden are now way overpowered compared to what was out there, and now they get all the attention while the other mods, which are a little uh, more tame, albeit even close to what those others were, are no longer used. For instance, take the COFH, the creators of the RF API. It would be rare that you would ever see their methods of producing RF used because they stayed at a tame level and other mods, in order to make their mod relevant compared to those tech mods, made them ever so slightly better. And that means they were overshadowed even when it's maybe 5% more efficient. With a wider scale, you're going to see a lot of these issues. That's my main issue with Tesla, and that's not something that's on their fault. I think that the API was developed well, and I'm excited to see where it goes, but it's just something that they've enabled to happen. This should never be a problem. I don't care how much energy you're producing, you don't need 2.1 billion, and it's just going to make it more resource hungry to do something bigger. But that's the design choice that they took, and that's something we have to work with. Aside from that, I personally think that if we are to pick RF or Tesla, Tesla would be the one to pick. Um, it works a lot better with the capability systems, and they seem to be working towards a more progressive future as opposed to the COFH that don't want to move forward, and I totally understand their point of view as well. They have their reasons, and that's totally okay. So... I'm going to be watching this. I just wanted to give you guys my reaction from a developer standpoint on what I think. I think having two at the moment is an issue. And as soon as one of them wins, hopefully this one, everything will be golden. But for now, we're just sort of stuck in between waiting to see what will happen. If anything happens, I'll update you guys in the future. And hope you enjoyed my little developer commentary on this new API. Thank you.